Welcome back. So we've been talking a lot about machine learning and physics informed machine learning, how you can essentially learn, uh, you know, physical quantities using things like neural networks. But one of the things that we know we want physical models to have is interpretability. We want expressions that are simple, that you can understand, that a human can read and explain, things like the Hamiltonian or the Lagrangian or something that's more interpretable than this big opaque neural network. These are notoriously hard to understand what's happening under the hood. So what if you want interpretable machine learning models? something that's more interpretable than a neural network. So today I'm going to talk to you about this idea, this package called PySER, Python Symbolic Regression, developed by Miles Cranmer, who is a professor at Cambridge University uh, in the UK, that is a really, really powerful idea for building interpretable models of the real world using what's known as symbolic regression. Okay, this is a uh, movie I actually got from uh, the GitHub page for um, you know this PySer symbolic regression .jl. Um, so you can you know go to this and download this code yourself and try it out. PySer is one of the best maintained uh, software packages out there for discovery, for scientific discovery, using interpretable machine learning. It is um, largely the work of Miles Cranmer, and you know, I think lots of people around the world have helped develop this, but um, really, you know, I want to give a huge shout out and credit to Miles for making this extremely powerful open source um, package for scientific discovery. And people across the world are using this to discover you know, equations, interpretable symbolic equations for things that you know, humans have never been able to write down equations for. So this is changing the way that we do science in some way. And I highly, highly encourage you to check this out and figure out how this works. So symbolic regression is just a way of saying, we're gonna do some regression, some machine learning procedure but what we want out is a formula that's actually symbolic, that's you know, human readable in terms of things like sines and cosines and exponentiation and things like that. Um, this movie essentially shows how this, you know, this search algorithm is searching over these function trees. That's how these functions are being represented in the terms of these compositional trees. It's searching over these different function trees and you know, adding a node and optimizing the constants and doing these things to get closer and closer and closer to predicting some you know, observed data function here. And you want the simplest model if it's the data and no simpler. Remember, that's that principle of parsimony. Symbolic regression um, is a great way of baking in that principle of parsimony to your learning algorithm. So we're going to talk a little bit about PySer. Um, again, this is a huge effort by Miles, um, so you really should go check it out, read the paper, see what examples people are doing. I'm just going to give you a high-level overview uh, of what's happening under the hood here. And importantly, symbolic regression is not new. Um, Oftentimes in the field, this is called genetic programming. Genetic programming is kind of an earlier form of symbolic regression using these function trees. And it is kind of a descendant of genetic algorithms. So these have been around since the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. Genetic programming in particular, um, you know, in its essentially current form in the 80s. But this is a very powerful modern take on that a very, very well-designed software package, so you can actually use it much more flexibly. It's much more powerful than before. And Miles and his colleagues are using this for actual scientific discovery, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, the idea here is that you're trying to learn some input-output function that describes your data. That's what a machine learning model is. But you want that input-output function to be a human-readable expression, you know, something like this here. And so there are these general kind of genetic operations of mutation where I might just change one term in the equation or crossover. Maybe I have two equations that both do a pretty good job of predicting my data, but not perfect. I might swap terms and see if that does a better job. It's kind of like, um, you know, 
This is an analogy for uh, biological reproduction where you take the DNA of you know two parents and pieces of them get swapped and maybe in your offspring you actually have some stronger char uh, characteristics. So that's crossover. Uh, sometimes there's a step called simplification where you, you know, maybe factor or reduce this thing down, get rid of some redundancies. And then optimizing constants. So if you have these constants out front, optimizing those can make a huge difference in this symbolic regression procedure. Uh, and then, you know, there's lots of ways of doing this, but often what you would do is you, you might start with a population of these functions and kind of evolve them forward using these genetic operations. Um, and there's lots of ways you can, you can optimize these functions using these, uh, these operations here. Uh, this is just a pictorial uh, view of what crossover and mutation are. So if we have some function we're trying to represent, like 1.15y plus uh, 0.86, you, you know, there's a plus operation, and it takes a constant here. That's the 0.86. It takes this uh, subbranch here, which is 1.85 times y, and it adds them together. So this is a function tree representation of this uh, expression here. And if I have two uh, function trees for two different functions, maybe each of these you know, performed so-so in modeling my data, what we're going to try to do is we might take a piece, a subtree, you know, some branch on this tree, and we might swap them and see if these children perform better. Now, oftentimes, you know, you get this regression to the mean and the performance doesn't actually uh, improve, but occasionally it does. And so if you do this enough times, some of your offspring might actually perform better, and then you allow them to advance to the next generation uh, in this optimization procedure. Similarly, mutation, maybe this plus sign here should be a minus sign, and so we switch it to a minus. You kind of randomly pick nodes and swap them out randomly. That's, again, like a genetic analogy. Sometimes UV light hits your cell, and it you know, changes your DNA a little bit, and your offspring have some weird, possibly beneficial uh, modification that might help them model that data better. So again, pictorial, I, and I pulled these directly from Miles' paper. So these are, these are Miles' uh, graphics here. And this is a figure I really like. Um, it gives this kind of abstract pictorial view of what's happening through this evolutionary uh, symbolic regression process. So you evolve these populations, and as they uh, you know, go through this crossover mutation, this kind of evolutionary algorithm, you start finding that there are, you know, these different islands of classes of functions, and sometimes you get migration between these islands, sometimes the islands segregate, and you get these different classes uh, of behavior. But I think this is a really nice kind of pictorial view of that abstract function space we're trying to model with this symbolic regression. Again, great paper. You should you know, download the paper, download the code, really try this out yourself. This is one of the powerful modern tools we have for interpretable modeling uh, of complex data, of physical data. Now, importantly, symbolic discovery is not new. Um, and I think, you know, Miles definitely doesn't claim that it's new, but I think, you know, for you, the viewer, I want you to know the history. Um, genetic programming is pretty old. That's, I think, from the you know, 80s, essentially, was that idea of, of building these function trees to approximate input-output data. But there was this really powerful breakthrough, uh, first by Bongard and Libsyn, and then by Schmidt and Libsyn, where they realized that you could use that genetic programming idea, that function tree representation, that evolutionary uh, algorithm, not just to learn arbitrary input-output data, but to learn differential equations. So if you have a physical system, you can use the symbolic regression to discover, for example, the differential equation that governs that data. Or you could learn a Lagrangian, you could learn a Hamiltonian in symbolic form using these genetic programming operations of crossover and mutation uh, and replication and things like that. And so in this paper in particular, they do things like take data from a double pendulum, this measurement data here, and they can learn, they can detect these invariances uh, like this Hamiltonian conserved energy here in symbolic form purely from the measurement data. 
This was a huge advance at the time. This was kind of categorically different than anything else that you know had really been done. Uh, and it used that idea of, of genetic programming, which is a very powerful way of building these pretty nasty functions through these compositional tree-like structures. Very powerful idea. Uh, and you can see kind of the process here. Again, I recommend you go download this paper. It's a classic now. But you know, it is built on this idea of, of genetic programming, of these function trees and mutation and crossover and kind of learning differential equations using these input-output functions, these very, very flexible uh, input-output representations. So symbolic model discovery is not new. Um, this also uh, has been productized into the software package uh, Eureka that um, uh, I think Schmidt and Libsyn developed this, but essentially it allows you to you know, upload your dynamical systems data and get these differential equations out, which is pretty cool. Um, this was the kind of direct uh, predecessor of our CINDY method, our sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. It's very closely related to that idea of, of symbolic uh, regression and symbolic model discovery. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that symbolic model discovery is not new. We've been doing this you know, for decades, but the PySER package is an extremely, extremely powerful modern way of doing it that allows everybody in the world to have access to these tools. And also, uh, I'll point out that Barrett Nowak and his colleagues um, applied this to also learn symbolic function representations for control laws. So if you have some control law use, some actuation signal um, that you want to learn, you can go through these same operations of crossover and mutation uh, and replication in some you know, proportion, some, some hand-tuned custom proportion, and you can breed these control laws to be more and more effective in controlling very complex systems like turbulent fluid flows. Um, so this is actually a, a textbook that, that the three of us wrote, I was a co-author on this, where we use the same idea of symbolic regression uh, to breed and evolve really effective controllers for things like fluid dynamics. So again, just a long way of saying symbolic regression um, has been around for a long time. It's been used for dynamical systems discovery by uh, Bongarden Lipson and Schmidt and Lipson. It's been used for control. But really, um, this kind of pi sur package is a huge step forward in democratizing this and making it available for everybody in the world. So you can try it now. Um, the features are really, really kind of um, neat. Uh, here's actually a lot of the features here of what PySer has versus a lot of the other classic uh, implementations. So actually, PySindy is in here, uh, Eureka is in here, and a lot of others. And you can see that you know PySer actually has been very thoughtfully designed by Miles to have um, the functionality you would need to really apply this to some pretty hard problems. And him and his colleagues have applied this for lots of neat scientific discovery, like relearning uh, the laws of planetary motion from data of the planets and things like that. Really cool uh, demonstrations that you can use this for actual scientific discovery. Um, extensively benchmarked on a lot of systems also. So you can actually, you know, here's a bunch of systems and you can see kind of PySer's ability to learn uh, the system compared to other leading, uh, leading algorithms. And I think five out of five here means it did a really good job. I'm not 100% sure I'd have to reread the paper um, to, to double check that. Another cool contribution of this paper is this empirical bench. So this is actually a benchmark uh, testing setup that has these cases. So if you want to try your symbolic regression algorithm, you can actually uh, add a column here, testing it against all of these other ones in empirical bench. So that's a really cool contribution too. Uh, and the code structure, I mean, uh, Miles is both a brilliant machine learning uh, expert, but he's also a great software engineer. And so the software here uh, has been really, really thoughtfully designed um, so that you can actually use it uh, and actually extend it if you have some ideas on your own.
So really, really cool stuff. Um, highly, highly recommend you play around with it. But if we zoom out, the big win here is that symbolic regression allows you to get more interpretable models. You get an actual function, an actual function you can write down. And there are simplification uh, algorithms in this, uh, this code that will do kind of in the olden days in, in, Matla in Mathematica, we'd call this like the full simplify, where it simplifies it down to the simplest version of the expression. You get that kind of flavor here uh, in PySer. And remember, this idea of you want the simplest model possible to describe the data, but no simpler. That was that principle of parsimony, that Einstein quote. In PySer, you can do that. You can plot. So you get all of these different uh, functions that could represent your data as this thing evolves. And you could plot them in you know, accuracy versus complexity. And you could pick the model that is kind of the most accurate at a given level of complexity, at the sweet spot of being as simple as possible to describe the data, but no simpler. Um, that was actually an idea that was used in the original um, Bongarden, Lipson, and Schmidt and Lipson papers. And it's an idea you can use here that you can plot the Pareto front and pick models based on you know, parsimony or simplicity. Those models are more interpretable, and they also have a better chance of generalizing uh, than just a deep neural network does. Okay, so um, again, download the code, download the paper. This is a huge service that Miles has done uh, for the machine learning community, is making this PySer package for interpretable, generalizable, symbolic regression. Okay, very cool package. Uh, try it out yourself. All right, thank you.